flan is such a warm place to hide. Come join us. Partake in the flan. Oh, no. There's one. Be one with us, the flan gear. All right. I've put up with a lot today. I, Gus, Tyver, you have to. There's one thing I won't put up with, and that's forcing someone to eat something they're not excited about. That they're not. I don't even like flan. I don't like flan either. Uh, you're. That's why we're best friends. That's why we're friends at all. <laughs> oh, all right, Gus. Do you have any weapons, Gus? Do you have anything at all? <laughs> oh man, what did Gus take? You tell me what Gus took from the kitchen. Uh, maybe a um. A meat tenderizer. Yeah, a meat tenderizer. Yeah, uh, just like a, essentially a truncheon, you yeah. know, yeah. Yeah, Gus pulls it out of a pocket. I took this. Bruh, this is I like... I wasn't going to say anything. Sorry. Sorry, Tyver. And, uh, Tyver, you've got the, uh, the Vibros patch. I've got the Vibros patch. Okie dokie 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 do. Uh... And Do I've... you know how much I was hoping you would call it a virus patch? Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. You got the virus patch. I've got I've got Big Panda here, and uh... all right. Come I'll join go. us. Yeah, yeah. We'll we'll join you for a nice dinner. Unfortunately, tonight we are serving up boatloads of f- flapjacks. Oh, let's flatten them, and then like we rush forward <laughs> and. Uh, yeah, I think um, Jock's gonna lead the charge and uh, try to knock these two Aqualish down. I don't think we're trying to like take them out of commission. We're just trying to like knock them. Yeah, out. yeah. It's initiative time. All right. Oh, Christmas. Okay. Uh, I- I'm guessing Cool would be okay due to the fact that like uh, yeah, we're sort of just dealing with this from the the get go. Uh, yeah. And I've had time to think about it, but. Uh, Initiative. Two successes. Um, let's get let's get your buddies. Yeah. I was really hoping for the triumph on that one. What you gonna do? Oh wait, did they do better or worse? What did they do? One success, one advantage versus two. Okay, so they did worse. Okay, so it's uh, you can take either the PC slot or their NPC slot. It's you guys, the the hosts. Mm-hmm. And then you guys. The host. Oh. oh. That's even more dinner lingo, isn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. I think... Uh, so it's PC, them, and then PC again. Or, yeah. you know, yeah. Good guys, bad guys. You're right. Good guys. Uh, I think I'm going to let Tyver... And, well, I said I was leading the charge, right? I think it just makes sense. Yeah. Jock's going in with a big pan and... Yeah, I think that like the stats wise for this big pan, it's basically almost like a truncheon, uh, like a bludgeoning yeah. thing. Okay, cool. If that makes if that makes any sense. All right. Uh, so it's a two purple, uh, unless they have. Uh, de- they do not defense or anything. At least I beefed up my melee. Uh, two purple, and yeah, I do not. I'm gonna save that light side point. Okay, here we go. Oh, three success and one advantage. Nice. What is your? What are the stats on, on your? Oh, I have it. Pan. Written, I even have it written down. Uh, okay, you so, do. Good. Yeah, it's plus one, accurate. Accurate. You get a boost. Oh, I would. I would have gotten a boost. Oh, I should go ahead and add that in just in case. Yeah. 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 There we go. Oh, an additional wow. success. Additional. All advantage. right. So that's four successes, two advantages. Are there any other um, special? things that your pan can do yeah it has it disorient knock two. Down or disorient yeah Dis- all right disorient two so you can disorient with your two advantages or you could uh, do something else with your two advantages yeah i think that i'm just trying to do uh, is there a way to do friendly blows to the head i don't think that is true but you know i'm <laughs> they're trying- aqualish they can handle it okay good yeah they, yeah they can handle it so uh jacques rushes forward sort of half leaping with this this heavy, heavy skillet and and just comes right down on the crown of one of the uh, Aqualishes 
and there's literally a, a dong, yeah. like a resounding sound, and uh, yeah, the disorient uh, takes effect. Yeah, I'm picturing this nice, like, slow motion jock leaping up into the air with the cast iron raised up while these two aqualish, like, with in perfect sync begin to crouch to run towards the group of you. Mm-hmm. And then you come down hard on, on them, and there's that clang. And what was the damage? It's plus two. I, do you add in your, your brawn. brawn of three? So, so five, five, six, seven. Wow. Tell me what happens. You knock one of them out. Oh, yeah. I think that, you know, in a very uh, Saturday morning cartoon kind of way, their head sort of vibrates. That it's, it's that, you know, getting hit with 15 pounds of heavy metal is uh is yeah. quite something so they're you know their whole the whole inner ear is off and they sort of slump against one wall and maybe their arms are still moving a little bit and and jock's like huh, oh, yeah deal with that it was all, oh, served up nice and cold <laughs> and you 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 take my roll down from a yellow and a green to just two greens Let's see what yeah. happens oh and a, and a and a setback all right they rolled a threat one threat <laughs> so as the one Aqualish goes down, the other one uh, loses sync. Like, uh, maybe they even stayed in sync while the one fell to the ground for a second. And the second one tries to catch itself as they they sort of lose the, the hive mind that they are. And do you have an idea for the threat? Hmm. Uh, there really isn't a way to add strain to this particular group. No. You could you could toss a boost to Tyver and Gus yeah, if you want. That's what I, I'd like to do. That that's a good idea. Yeah. This is not their thing, by the way. Right. So I wouldn't it's think probably so. Probably not going to go well. <laughs> uh, what is the damage on your vibro spatch? Uh, I just wrote it in as basically exactly like a vibro knife. Uh, okay. It's a plus one well, damage. Pretty good. Pierce two and vicious of one. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to describe what they do as they run in after you, Gus? quietly appreciating why you would now want a heavy pan <laughs> yeah it's like you know what all right you know i think i, I, I think get it. <laughs> i think that they see they see the they hear the sound the resounding you know bong, and the you know almost you could it, it almost travels to them where they're you know the room gets a little shaky for them as well the sound is so loud uh, and then the aqualish slumping over and they get sort of that, uh, like the hobbits, they get that rush of like, all right, yeah, we gotta, we gotta <laughs> yeah. do something and run forward, and it's all cook, it's all cooking yeah, in- yeah. implements. They, and- they shout as they run towards uh, this this second aqualish and start pummeling him with a, a spatula and a meat tenderizer, right. and it's back around to you. Uh, all right, uh, yeah, uh, k- k- keep keep them steady. I'm, I'm coming in for another big one, and. Uh, <laughs> Jock uh, raises the pan again and uh, is going to try and do the same thing. Just a, a knockout doink on the head. Uh, Perfect. Okay. <laughs> That's a very look. Uh, I mean, there's really no reason to try anything uh, different. Uh, you want to aim? Oh, I could, couldn't I? Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. So five successes and one advantage is definitely going to take this this Aqualish out. Yeah. Do you have an idea for the advantage and would you like to describe what you do? Uh, with the advantage, I I think that I don't know. I just think that Jock is a little more confident now that this plan this plan has merit. They were here to stop Jock from getting to the, you know, that's what that's what he's thinking. They're, they're, they're here to stop me from securing, you know, the generator and what's going to keep the heat up. And uh, yeah, so Jock is bolstered by that they're knocked out cold and i think it's on to the next thing for jacques okay you swing that pan up and it connects with the aqua aqualish's uh little mouth butt uh (laughs) and you hear the reverberation the clang and it knocks her off her feet Mm. and the three of you keep running it's like you didn't even stop running right (laughs) yeah it was like a, a very quick game of whack-a-mole as you're running out of the arcade, you know, boom, boom, just uh-huh. to keep going. <laughs> uh, one more flight of stairs, and you are there at, it's surprising this ship had stairs. 
Uh, you were there <laughs> at the uh, at the control room for the for the power and other things. Uh, as the three of you get through, Gus quickly uh, slides the door closed and pushes the buttons on the panel to lock it. The control room is brightly lit. You can see that all the all the readouts show that power is uh, throughout the ship uh, to any uh, remaining undamaged systems. And I think I think at this place you might even have like cameras to the rest of the ship okay yeah uh what would we so jock approaches the cameras and is like looking trying to find the last spot they were in with all the the wild activity going on and the 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 lift and all that and is trying to find that particular so maybe like cycling through uh cameras yeah you see the the couple Duros laying on the floor and then as you cycle through the cameras again you see Mr. Chamras and the two others just sort of slowly stalking through the hallways looking around like almost like animals uh, in sync with each other hmm. uh so Tyver, Gus uh, do they look slower like maybe the this is working or maybe uh, yeah and Tyver goes up close to one of the, one of the video readouts there uh blue and all horizontal lines and blurry like any any camera in star wars would be right <laughs> and he and he's, he squints i think they look extra sweaty mm. a fever you can't sweat out hmm. uh, well what do you think they would do if we pumped a bunch of music in like you think uh we could amp this up with a dance party Tyler? um I, uh is that a silly question Yes, says Gus. That is a silly question. Sorry, I was just trying to kill some time. I, th- I think at this point we really just have to wait this out. And if this doesn't work, I, I, I don't really have much else. Uh, uh, I don't, I don't. Yeah. What do the next three hours look like? Uh, the next three hours is, you know, pretty much removing all clothing, uh, setting the pa- pan down for one thing, and then just sort of leaning up next to the TV screens and every few minutes just going over and looking at the activity and seeing if there's any progress in the way they think it might be and then just sort of laying there and sort of sweating quietly uh, <laughs> you know. uh, uh, eventually you, you notice that anybody who it seemed may have ingested and become one with the flan um, is, is just laying on the ground alright guys did, did you call the clones at all during this? Did you call anybody? No, that's right. You know what? Oh, oh. You got a great point, Matt. You got a great point. We really should have done that at literally any point. Uh, can we do that now? Do you have a... I think we could do it now. We could probably... Uh, uh, and Jock's head sort of lulls back a little bit as the... You know, he's, he's just minutes from pretty much fainting at this point as well. Yeah. It's so hot. And it's like, well... Can you call him for me, bud? <laughs> bud. Oh. I don't want to get up. All right. Okay. I could do this. And then just lays one melting arm up on the table and, uh, you know, is trying to hit like the, the a call button, I guess. Maybe that's a resilience check to try. And find yeah, I think it is a resilience <laughs> check. Oh, no. Oh, good. I have I have three resilience. Oh. I know you're, you're pretty good at resilience. I want to make it hard, though. Okay. I'll use my last light side point. You have you have two now. Oh, I do. Oh, yeah, you got one more. Oh, okay. Nothing to worry about. All right. One, one single six. success. It was already set to call to call out, uh, or to yeah. call the, to call authorities. Hey, hey, yeah, like uh, we're up here on this ship. Uh, get clone, 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 clone commander. Uh, Howdy. Uh, we need this some... is CT four two seven six seven eight. Well, uh, honestly, you're calling an emergency line. Yes, this is an emergency. Now, I know that my voice can come across as very relaxing, and uh, can come across as very, you know, like maybe jovial or maybe like I'm telling a joke. I am currently not joking. There is some kind of a zombie food virus. It's a foodborne virus. I think that's gotten out on this ship. And people are attacking other people. So we pretty much need like a hazmat 
unit. You know what I mean? Uh, you guys need to be strapped to the nines and uh, locked and loaded when you get in here because currently they're all laying on the ground. We turn the heat way, way up, but you need to isolate. You need to isolate pretty much everybody. And it's it's bad news. It's it, it's bad. It's bad news. Ugh. Don't move. We're sending some DOA. All right, We're, we've locked ourselves in the uh, the generator room, so just, just stay on the line. You know, I don't know why we didn't think to call you sooner. I've just been laying here sweating for a, 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 a couple hours, so uh, yeah. <laughs> I think Jacques maybe passes out at this point. <laughs> yeah, I think everybody passes out. <laughs> yeah, you you pass out to the echoing, uh, echoing voice of a clone. Jock, Jock, stay with me now. Jock, are you there? Uh, uh, I, 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 Captain Cody. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you wake up in a, a bright room. The walls are close around you. As you blink your eyes, they, they're like thin sheets of semi-transparent plastic. You're on a bed. Uh, you can see on the, there are two beds next to you. You see Gus, you see, you see Tyver. You see people moving around in hazmat suits. Nobody in the space that you're in right now, but in the, in the ones next, next to you since the, the walls are semi-transparent. And one of them looks towards your room as they see you moving, and you hear the <laughs> of a, of a zipper, <laughs> and somebody somebody walks in. You can't see their face through the uh, the shield that they have there, Mister Decathba. Yeah, D D Decathba, but it's fine. Decathba. Yeah. Sorry, you. I'd say you're lucky to be alive, the three of you. Mm -hmm. You have heat stroke. It's yeah. a dangerous thing. Yeah, we should have called you a lot sooner. We, sh uh, you know, but us, it's it's kind of like kitchen etiquette. You just make it work, you know. <laughs> you know, ah, oh, yeah. Well, thank you. You should feel proud. You saved a bunch of people. Well, well, cool. Uh, I I gotta give credit to Gus, uh, Guster over here, and uh, Tyver, Tyver. They were huge help, and I, you know, we figured it out somehow, you know. They, they always say, if you can't handle the, the heat, get out of the kitchen, you know? And so I just took that to heart at this motto. I was like, get, you, you get out of the, you get out of the kitchen. And I, you know, turn the heat I'll, up. I'll write that now, Mr. DeCathba. <laughs> get way back down. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is going to be a, a bit of a recovery for you. You're not going to be feeling well for the next few days. Just uh, take it easy. We're not ready to release you yet. We still need to do some tests. Whatever the people aboard that ship were infected with, it is something we haven't seen in a long, long time, and we're going to have to make sure that everybody is uh, it's fully um, flushed from everybody's systems, yours included. You had a little bit in there. I don't know if you knew that. Oh. Oh, I didn't know at all. That's a... Uh, guess we got lucky, huh? Yeah. Yes, yes, you did. Probably shouldn't have been sniffing that crumb cake or flan or whatever it was. Yeah. It was food born, but there was also a... There was a lot of spoiled food aboard that ship. I'm afraid we've had to incinerate quite a bit of it. Oh. Well, yeah. You know. It, it is what it is. Uh, I'm just gonna go back to... Back to sleep now, I think. Uh, That's for the best. Yeah. You got any like Jolly Ranchers or anything, or you got a, you got a, something to. F <sighs> a week later, Jock is with Tyver in the small space that Tyver has uh, has rented for uh, his his. Uh, he's he's now decided to do a, a food truck. Ah, it's yes. the it's the easiest for now. The easiest thing. Get get all that stuff and, and move it into a into a speeder van, and uh, that that gives him uh, you know he gets to go where where the people are. He can go to the theater after it's closing, go down to Gunga Gunga Town, whatever. So the two of you are setting up, and he I think you get some of the the last stuff in and hooked up, and Tyver is putting some 
spices up on the spice rack. And they, uh, like, dust off their hands and turn to you and say, You know, I don't think I could have done any of this without you. Thanks for all the help. Uh, you know, it's just, uh, it's just what I'm in for. I'm into it, you know? Let's find these new flavors. Flavors that aren't likely to, uh, you know, in- infect your nervous system and uh, turn you into a mindless zombie. Like, kind of like the opposite of that, actually. Turn you into a mindful f- a friend uh, or something. Uh, flavor. Uh, yeah. Sometimes you got these little pearls of wisdom that just... That aren't you pearls know, at all. They're, they're yeah. smashed between two other things that are not pearls of wisdom. <laughs> I th- <laughs> Something I appreciate about you, Jock. I think you've hit the nail on the head there. You've uh... Uh, hit the aqualish on the head. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, hopefully they're okay. I mean, uh... I think I think they're fine. The, the Aurora Biotech people know what they're doing. Hmm. Yeah. So, uh, What's the name of this food truck again? What do we what do we co- what do we what do we decide, you know? Uh, how about how about this? Definitely not flan. Exclamation <laughs> point. <laughs> I think I, I I you know that would I feel like people would like that. <laughs> no flan intended. No. No, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. We'll spitball it. We'll come up with something. We go. We'll, we'll come up with something. Yeah. Uh but I heard. I think. I think we're we're ready to go. I think. I think there's a show letting out on in the, in the undercity. You want to take this speeder for a test drive? Oh, let's do it. Let's locked and loaded, and, uh, fried, fried, fly. No, nope, you know what? Let's uh, let's cook. Let's cook it. Let's let's get cooking. Let's get cooking. Yeah. You know right, we're not of- <laughs> we're not good at catchphrases. We got to admit that now. We got to <laughs> no, maybe Gus will have some ideas. Gus, I'll, Gus. I'll check with him later. <laughs> All right, you get the sign written up. You get the uh, the menu for tonight. I'll, I'll get us down there. And he goes up to the the front seats and starts the speeder up. And the uh, two of you head down to the undercity. As we see Jock get the uh, whiteboard and marker out and start to make the menu for the night our camera moves over his shoulder to that spice rack goes across and we see Alderanian ginger we see some Dathomiri chili flakes a few others and then we settle on the last spice in the rack flan gear Thanks for listening to this episode of Coruscant Nights. Thank you to Sam from the Starboards podcast for playing on these episodes. If you like Coruscant Nights, be sure to check out our other shows, The Other Place, Tales from the Grey Library, and Lone Gamers of the Apocalypse. And be sure to check out our Patreon. Currently on the Patreon, Doug and I are releasing Bad Badge Boys, a podcast where I make Doug watch all of the Star Wars things that he hasn't seen. We're currently doing a deep dive into The Clone Wars Season 7 with episodes releasing every other week. Coruscant Nights is a production of Nightcast Creative. You can find more info about us and all of our other shows at nightcastcreative.com. Starbirds, Starbirds, Starbirds. Trailer, trailer, trailer. Starbirds. Hello, and welcome to the Starbirds Podcast. This is Season 2. So, Gid takes the box from B-Rad. She smells it and then she licks it. And she goes, I know where this box is from. Oh, okay. Uh, you didn't... Did you have to lick it? Did yeah, that's what you do. Uh, like, when you're trying to identify wood, you lick it. It's like a real life oh, thing. That, 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 like, that, cherry that wood kind of has, like, a right. sweet flavor to it. It's a thing. I'm sorry. You have the perfect opportunity to be shaggy and Scooby-Doo. And you're going to leave Scooby in the van? Uh, this is making Vicar's instincts pop up from another room, and he hasn't even seen it yet. Like, gosh, scamps, I don't know. Uh, maybe we should get Fred involved. The force is warning me, Scoob. <laughs> That's not a lot. Okay. This has been a long, strange walk, okay? I honestly we're all, we're, didn't I, think honestly, it would take this long. This is, we're at, there's so much tension right now. We're at each other's throat. You hear this? I'm emotionally you hear the exhausted. Tone, you, hear the, you hear the pitch of my voice right now? 
I'm That's very... stress. Listen, I'm talking. You listen. We need to chill out and we need to be on the same team here. Now we're all going to sit down. Very well. Very well. And Dabith is going to buy us flapjacks. And even though I just made you noodles like an episode ago, we're going to eat the flapjacks. What is this? You keep talking about episodes. Are you having an episode? Is yes, that what you're saying? I've had a number of episodes. <laughs> okay. I think we should just walk down that alleyway. And then if they say anything to us, I'll just like whoop pow right in the face yeah, and then we just can. keep walking hey get, i bet you you could actually give get, me a run for get, my money in an arm wrestling get, contest yeah right i feel now. like get, so strong get, what get, uh, get, what get, what get, <laughs> what uh get mm -hmm. um yes remember that glove <laughs> remember that time i get that glove for you yeah and look i can like she clicks it with her fingers and the little ball forms that's pretty cool huh it's very cool Vickers I is walking towards the uh, alley gang. <laughs> I should throw this, shouldn't I? I should throw I it. am so strong. Let's go. I'm going to throw it. Kid just turns around and throws it behind her and then <laughs> runs down the alleyway. Oh, my God. <laughs> you can find the Starbirds anywhere you find podcasts. Spotify, Stitcher, Google, iTunes. <laughs>